We are going to continue with photo retouch, the last big subject, subject that I'm going to talk about today. And then at the end, as I said, we are going to go, uh, talk about in overall all the subjects together. Again, I would like to start uh, with a quick summary of photo uh, manipulation or photo retouch. This is actually from Wikipedia, and it's interesting to know how they summarize it. Photo manipulation is often much more explicit than subtle alterations to color balance or contrast and may involve overlaying a head onto a different body or changing a sign's text and uh, the desired result, uh, same, sorry, changing a sign's text, for example. Image editing software can be used to apply effects and warp an image until the desired result is achieved. The resulting image may have little or no resemblance to the photo or photos in the case of uh, composi compositioning from which it originated. Today, photo manipulation is widely accepted as an art form. So, um, this is again a very big topic and very uh, um, big part of the creative field use, um, using Photoshop. So, uh, let me go in details. Again, main areas in this field are the following things. There are technical retouching and creative retouching. That's first of all you need to know about. This one, for example, what would you say? Is it creative or technical retouching on the left? It's more creative. And you use more artistic effects than like a beauty retouch. So we have fashion, beauty products, advertisement, photo art, and restoration. These are all uh, big topics like fashion and beauty, we can say like glamour uh, photography, and um, that's massive industry again, just like for digital art is the computer games and films, here it's glamour and, and beauty. And the main skills needed for retouch uh, are the following, image manipulation obviously, which is again effects, treatment, and creating monta montages in Photoshop. Again, I'm going to show you lots of examples. Uh, rendering techniques are again important. In this case, it's mainly dodge and burn tool and similar tools like that, so it's brushes, using uh, brushes. Um, also, it's important to understand trends in fashion industry when you create these uh, retouch uh, jobs and working with colors is again really essential. Now, additional skills that might help you in this uh, field are uh, illustration. Again, it's good to have hand drawing skills, not, uh, not essential, but good to, it will help you. <laughs> makeup is an interesting thing. So if you know things about makeup, even if you don't do yourself makeup, guys, for example, <laughs> but still, if you know about how it works, and you know the basics of it, it will definitely help you. For example, for me, I started doing a uh, retouch on uh, beauty shots and models. And once I've learned more about makeup from my fiance, I, I managed to do a much better job on most of, the, most of the designs or retouch work. So it definitely helps to understand it uh, because it's very similar to it. Also, anatomy is useful and not as essential as in digital art. Photography will help you and print production as well, but they are not essential. Um, mainly used areas and tools in Photoshop, obviously the retouch tools. Can you tell me what are the retouch tools in Photoshop? Just give me a couple of them. Healing brush, clone stamp tool, there's the spot healing brush, which is very similar, patch tool. And then also masking and using brushes are very useful. Liquify filter is one of the essential filters we use uh, for Photoshop. And good news in Photoshop CS6, they improved it a lot. So it works much better now. Puppet work was, was introduced in CS5. Uh, uh, CS5. Again, a big improvement for, uh, for uh, retouching. It actually helps a lot to redefine this, the the posture of uh, models, uh, so you can change the whole uh, body with that really easily. And filters and blend modes are also very important. Now, that's a, that's a good example here, what we can see, and I, I would like to just quickly talk about this, and then I'll show you a couple of examples. So, once again, um, if you always wanted to know the secrets behind the beauty industry, and you were always 
uh, intrigued by well, how can they look so perfect. That's a, that's, that's a main thing in this uh, field. That you, you will have to make minor adjustments, lots of lots of minor adjustments, but that will lead to the end result. And in this case, it's hard to see all these details, but I will show you closely. So it's like narrow waist, uh, get rid of little wrinkles on the clothes, uh, just change the way the hair flows, and uh, lots of little things like this. So it's, most of the time, it's not just getting rid of uh, um, deep lines under the eyes, for example, but it's also changing the clothes and changing little adjustments, like here on the, on the shoes, get rid of like a fly away, something there from the, from the shoes. And um, as you can see also, this is not the same image, what we can see on the left and on the right. What you have to do in fashion industry, you have to combine uh, parts from images and then put it together, compositioning these elements. So from this photograph, this was the part that they, the client wanted to use. And then this is from another photograph and that is from another photograph. Because the ph photographer, photographer tries to create a perfect image, but because there's five models at the same time, it is really difficult to get everything right in one photograph. So to make it look perfect, they actually use several photographs and the photo, the retoucher has to put these all together in one as compositioning and at the same time retouch all those little changes down on them. So you will probably end up working on images like this, these pretty girls for, for the whole day. So if you don't mind doing that, then again, photo retouches for you. And um, if, you, if you can spend hours getting rid of unnecessary things from your holiday photographs and just make sure that there's no uh, annoying, like, uh, I don't know, like cables in the front, stuff like that, then again, this is exactly the same thing, but it, it's in a bit more professional uh, images. So let me show you these examples. And um, again, I can show you first these uh, before and afters. There's, as I said, there's creative and technical retouching. The previous one we saw is more technical when it looks very realistic. So there's, you can hardly tell that whether there's retouch or no applied to the image. On the other hand, there are very uh, strong retouches as well. And I just want to show you a quite scary example. I'm not sure if you've seen this one, but this is quite obvious, the retouch. If you only see this one, you might not think about it, but uh, we know how old Madon Madonna is, so it's obvious that they use retouch uh, on, on her images, and that's quite a strong example. But let me show you a bit more subtle one. This is a beauty shot ending, ending up on, um, uh, in magazines uh, in an advert, and you can see that from a, from a nice photograph, so the, the, there's nothing wrong with the original photograph. It just make it look perfect. So completely, uh, there's no problems on the skin. The teeth is just perfect. Everything, the eyes, the eyes are so sharp and just uh, everything looks very clean. So this is what you need to achieve for beauty shots. And this sometimes takes a couple of hours, sometimes even a whole day depending on how uh, detailed you want to uh, make your work. And uh, to, to tell the truth, this is a really well-paid uh, job with uh, Photoshop, because if you are good in this, there's so many work again. So it's like endless. You can find so many work for this, and you can very easily work as a freelance retoucher. That's something that you, need to, you don't need to work for a big company. You can be anywhere. Uh, you can work from here to, for New York agencies and, and many uh, other opportunities. Again, you just need to get your techniques right and you need to understand how the whole industry works. And after that, again, just practice, practice, practice. It's all the same thing as digital art, but here you don't really need to imagine things because for digital art it's really important to have imagination. Here it's more about just make it look perfect. Okay, so you start with something and you have to end up with something very similar but more clean version. Again, another example from left to right, before and after. You can see 
here it's a bit again a bit more artistic approach where we add more contrast on the on the sides again uh, girls would say this is very similar to when you apply the makeup on the on the cheekbones and um, the whole thing looks like makeup but it's a digital makeup so retouching retouching portraits is more like a digital makeup this is more technical retouch, so it's not really the artistic uh, way for retouching. Then let me show you other examples as well. Mm. There, there are examples when the skin just looks too perfect, I would say, but that's, that's another trend. So it's a style that they use. For example, here you can see the skin is almost like porcelain. It's, it's definitely not real. Everyone can tell it's retouched. Or uh, another example, again, the skin just looks so perfect that, there's, that you can't even see the pores, which is in a technical retouch would be a big, big mistake. So if you send this to a company where they ask for technical retouching, they would send this back right away and saying, you just blurred the whole skin. We can't see any detail on the skin. Okay, that would be like a big, big problem. But for, for other, uh, like a magazine, where they ask for something like this, then it will be perfect or just, just the same as here. Okay, so there's always difference uh, between uh, the artistic and te technical retouch. It's not only the skin and make the face look better, but also sometimes retouch uh, is about adding more hair, increasing the volume of the hair, which is again a really fun thing to do, but it might take like five, six hours to do this because you will use different samples from other photographs. You need to color balance them to make it look like the same and then clone and retouch them together to make it look realistic. So it's really, it's really fun, but very time consuming. Just like digital art as well, you can imagine those paintings that I showed, they take hours and hours. When you are, when you are uh, good in digital art, you still need lots of time to do it. I would say graphic design is the fastest. With graphic design, because you have images and you have type, most of the times you're combining them to, together in a clever way, you already have some kind of result. Well, with retouch, you have to spend hours and hours, and with digital art as well. But always at the end result, you get a really nice uh, image. So it's, um, it's a great, great uh, way to work with these images. Let me show you another example. Yeah, I was talking about um, these images. Let me show you them one by one now. So you can see I show you the three photographs. So. Uh, when I got these from the client, they sent me these uh, images without any brief, and I have to be able to see what they want. So you have to make sense of all these uh, just dribbles on the images. So they basically mark the parts that they would like to use. And you can see here it's quite straightforward. They don't want to use those girls. They want to use them too. From that one, they only want to use her, but not even her legs, only this part and then combine it with the legs from this. But make sure that that hand is not there because then she will have three hands. So you have to get rid of that and use it together with the top part there. And that's just a part of the whole thing because then you have all these little changes which you have to go very closely and adjust everything one by one and make sure that you don't miss anything from the design or from the retouch. So let me show you the final result. As the final result, and let me uh, open this up. Ah, yeah, actually, I have it opened up, and I can here show you how it works. First of all, I turn off all the adjustments to the colors. You can see that I'm using again everything completely non-destructively, using separate layers for the adjustments, so I can always make changes to it and turn it on and off just to see how it was before and after. So you can see helps a lot on the original photograph using together with the adjustments. Then if I turn on and off these layers here, you can see that from this image, I only needed the two of them and this part, okay? Using masks, I just simply uh, 
show these parts and hide the other parts, but still I have them there if I need to use some parts from it. So I can combine them easily together. And there is another part, this one. As you remember, it was from another photograph. Again, only that part is uh, relevant, so I only have that in the composition. And then them from another photograph, where again I had to get rid of that girl. Now, if I zoom closer on this one, as you remember, there were lots of changes as well. So if I go closer and open this group up, we can see without retouch and with the retouch. And let me just try to do this one by one again. So I turn off all of these. And for example, for the shoes, let's zoom closer here. I turn off the changes on the shoes. And I can't see much of a change. Uh, yeah, it's, it's really, really subtle changes. If I only zoom close, closer, you will see what's happening here. It's a very big file, that's why Photoshop is struggling because I'm recording this as well. So just look at, look at the shoes, bef that's after, and that was before. So even like little things, apart from that there on the top to get rid of the, uh, the element, that one, that's, that's okay. But even like things like this is not straight, and they want to have it straight. So little things like that, you have to adjust. See, it will go straight. So you won't even notice, but they want to make it look perfect. It's completely, everything has to be the way they, they want it. So, um, and there's so many other parts here. I'm just really find this slow now, Photoshop, to work with. I might need to turn off the other files. Yeah, sorry. Well, it's a... Uh, it's a massive file. You can imagine for print, they, they always use big, big files. Uh, I want to just go back and show you, for example, the dress. If I zoom closer on the dress, I can turn on those layers. So this is retouch on the dress. You can see on the left. Okay. So again, make it look perfect and make it look still believable, but make it uh, get rid of all the problems. Then the arms, for the arms, little changes like that. Let me turn these off and on again. You can see the curves have to be, uh, in, in fashion uh, they don't like these sharp, sharp uh, changes. They want to make it look nice and uh, curved. So that was before and that's after. But in some cases they want to make it straight. So it's all about these lines and to make it look nice. And I don't want to go in details in this, but you can see it's quite a lot of work put into it. I worked on this image for a whole day. So uh, you, you, can, you can get lost in this, uh, but uh, if you know the, the tools and the techniques used for this, it's actually really fun and it's very relaxing. It's something that you can listen to music, you can even watch a film, I mean like just listening to a film, or even sometimes uh, look at the TV, because this is something that you can do without really thinking about it. Obviously you have to make sure that you retouch everything, but if you follow that one by one, you can go without really have to think about it. While with uh, graphic design, you really have to think about composition. There you have to create. In digital art, you even have to concentrate more because you have to think about how it all will work together. You have to uh, design something from scratch. In this case, you don't really have to be creative, most of the uh, cases, because you get the brief and you just follow, uh, follow the direction. Um, but as I said, there are uh, creative uh, retouches as well. Let me just show you another more technical retouch. Uh, another one, uh, uh, beauty retouch on the face. Again, before and after. So you can see, there is actually, it looks like it's not that complicated to do this, but again, it's a couple of hours put into this, because mainly things like little details, like these hair here, you have to get rid of it completely, not even from there, but also from this part. So you have to really, really uh, zoom in close and make all these changes, okay? 
and obviously the eyes have to look perfect the skin have to look perfect so again curves like this look at this part okay make it look nice and and curved so um, this is this is another good example and then the more creative retouch which is on the edge or on the borderline between graphic design and photo retouch but I would say this is more photo retouch um, where you where you have to create some kind of interesting uh, effect using an image and in this case it's uh, again I can show you the the original image then the phone and then using an adjustment layer to turn everything black and white then using the image here and if I turn this off oh, sorry if I well, how can I show you that as the shadow as well um, it's basically a mask which will only let the image the colored version show up here so if I turn off the bottom one this is how it looks it's basically the same image it's just a play with the colors how to use black and white and colors together okay so that's that's a bit more creative uh, retouch or graphic design as well it's somewhere between the two and uh, that is also an interesting example with Gary <laughs> Uh, I just want to show you that graph uh, we saw the example in fashion but there are so many examples in um, advertisement uh, design when you have to combine lots of images together in this case the original photograph was this <laughs> and then changing the background and adding elements like the gun and even the gun on the reflection so you have to make sure that it's there everywhere you can create a better result and probably get to where your client wants you to be. So um, that's another interesting example and I think these are all I wanted to show you. Um, there are more examples but we don't really have time for all of them and uh, I'd rather talk about, I'll just go back, and questions you might ask yourself. So. We saw all these, uh, all these three areas, main areas, with, uh, whenever you work with Photoshop in the creative industry, graphic design, digital art, photo retouch. And um, almost everything falls in these three distinct areas. And once you, the, once you decide to work with Photoshop and you want to choose which area is the best for you, there will be these questions coming up uh, right away. First of all, the first question, am I creative enough? Now for, for this question I would say that creativity is not a talent. And that is really important to, to first of all think about. Being talented in, 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 in a, on its own is a really interesting thing, whether it's true or not, whether it's, it's something that you're born with or is there anything like talent or it's just made up like something that we put a label on everything but creativity is definitely not a talent and why I say that is that um, there's pl lots of people talking about this one of them I would highly recommend to watch is John Cleese I'm sure you know John Cleese the comedian has an amazing speech about this uh, he talks about creativity you can find it on YouTube it's an amazing speech half an hour worth watching it he talks about exactly this that to be able to be creative, anyone can be creative, you just have to be playful. You have to think like a child. If you, if you do everything as you planned, and if you try to follow rules like perspective or CMYK, RGB cons constraints, you won't be able to be creative. You have to break out from all the rules and all the usual things that, that you do and be playful as a child without any problems. Only then you can be creative. But if you can do that, if you can be playful, then you can definitely be creative. And what John Clay said about this is really interesting and that's completely, I agree with this, that you have to be able to switch between two modes. There's an open and a closed mode. The open mode is the creative mode and the closed mode is the productive and more uh, strict mode. If you can only do one of these modes, you won't be able to do design. 
But if you can switch between these two, you will be a successful designer or photo retoucher or digital artist. Basically what happens is that you have to be able to switch off everything around you, find your, per your personal space where you can work, don't think about anything else around you, um, then you need time to be able to play and be creative. Once you start playing, you will come up with lots of random ideas and, and, and new things that you can create. Once you have those ideas, then you can switch back to the close mode, which is more common. We are, as adults, we are usually in the close mode. We follow, follow our plans for the day or for like an hour ahead. We follow those things. Okay, I have to do this, I have to do that, I have to, I have to be there on time. These are all keeping you in the close mode. But if you can switch to the open mode for only an hour, you will be able to be creative and come up with something great but you have to create that. And to be able to create it, once you have the idea, or it's just a composition in your head, that's also something for, for which you need creativity. Once you have that, you can switch back to the close mode, and then you can use all the things that you need, like the skills we were talking about. And that is just something that you need to follow and create it. So once you have a, for digital art, the playfulness is the composition and the whole idea. I want to paint a monster, that's playful. It's not something that you, you just read in a book. And that monster will be green, and it will have four arms, and it will have lots of sharp teeth. This is playfulness. And the way you draw a quick sketch that this monster is somehow uh, based in your composition, it's all creative and playful. But as soon as you have the, the initial sketch, you have to switch back to the uh, close mode, and you have to render it. And, and add all the little details, which is execution. Let me just show you an, a quick example of this. Uh, I just go back to the digital art, um, and uh, there is a good example here. So when I, when I painted this several years ago, I was like really tired, and I was just, just scribbling on the, uh, in Photoshop, and I came up with this character, this was the original sketch, and I just wanted to have, I had this idea to have the tank as a, as a backpack on the soldier, and that was the, the initial idea. A very playful, almost childlike drawing as well. So it's, it's nothing, nothing close to uh, the end result. But once you have this, and that was in the playful mode, I was drawing lots of funny characters, but this was the best, and once I had this, I could go back to the close mode, and start to clean this up and create a, a finer line drawing, then add colors, and then add all the details, which will make it look better, and then add some background as well. So sometimes, no matter how better this looks compared to the first stage, sometimes this is the most difficult part, because this is where you need to be creative. No one will tell you to do this if you are an artist, no one will tell you to draw a soldier with a tank on his back. You have to come up with that, that idea. But anyone can come up with that I ideas like this. Anyone. It's, it's not the talent, as I said. Talent can help you to, if you are talented in drawing, talent can help you to then uh, end up with something like this. But again, as I said, uh, all these skills can be, can be uh, improved and learned. Okay, so you don't have to have any of these skills, you can always improve them if you, if you, are, uh, if you really want to end up being a, like in digital art. So that's just a quick example that I wanted to show about this. So um, remember uh, this uh, thing about uh, creativity. Everyone is creative enough to be an artist or designer. So it's, it's only up to you. Uh, how you can get to that playfulness and then switch back to close mode again. And uh, John Cleese said that he, th you need to follow five steps to get to the playful mode, the open mode. You need space, so you need to have your own space. You need time. He said time twice because you need time to get there and then time to, sp to stay there as well. Confidence, you need to also be confident in, in yourself that you are doing 
the things that you need to do and you need humor and that's also really important if you want to be creative you, you need to have humor a sense of humor because you can't just always work about the uh, following the rules next question is how long will it take to get somewhere in the creative industry uh, for this I can tell you it mainly depends on the motivation and inspiration that you find and uh, only basically the desire to create if you have a strong desire in yourself uh, that you want to create you just want to create something cool that's the best thing because you can use that to have to find time every day to spend uh, and improve your skills in the area that you that you're more in most interested in so it's mainly up to you to be motivated enough to get there where you want to and obviously it's it can take five minutes to find a job that you can work on if you if you really want to do it on the internet you can easily find freelance freelance work in logo design digital art photo retouch I would be able to find a job really quickly without sending any of my work they just give you the brief even you can access files like that retouch work came from New York from a company I've never met before and they had this this uh, work on the internet I found it downloaded the images worked on it send it back and that's it so you can really easily in in this uh, age it is really easy to get to the clients and to find work it's not like going to interviews in design it's it, you can you can be a freelance designer and you can find lots of different uh, jobs it's only up to you how soon can you get to that point when you feel confident in yourself it's more most mainly about that and obviously you can't really tell whether you you are good at something already or you need to still learn that's why you need to share your work and that's I'm going to talk about that soon can I only choose one area in the creative industry next question um, it is better to focus on one area first and as you've seen like graphic design in itself is already a massive topic there's so many areas inside that so it's definitely good to focus on one let's say graphic design and in graphic design focus on uh, poster design for example or you can do graphic design in general but it's not really good to start off with graphic design and photo retouch and digital art because you will probably end up between all of those and you won't be able to do any of them uh, really well so it's good to focus on one but then after several years in that field you can always start to start to learn more about the other fields that you are interested in because it is very similar they, they will they can improve each other so let's say you started graphic design and you've been doing gra graphic designs for design for years but you're really interested in retouch photo retouch you already have most of the tools at your hand and you know how to work with them you just need to use them a bit differently and once you learn how to use them for retouching it will actually help your work in graphic design as well it's a good example how many of you play musical instruments okay there's some of you in music uh, when I, I when I studied first piano I studied for 12 years playing the piano and after after eight years I started learning the guitar to play the guitar I studied that for another five six years and after another three years still playing the piano and the guitar I started learning the clarinet playing the clarinet and each time when I started a new instrument my my original instruments got so much better like a quick jump in all of them because the new instrument opened up a completely new understanding in music okay they are so different piano guitar clarinet but they all they are all musical instruments and they will all help each other it's exactly the same thing with these uh, creative in the creative industry so if you are open and you are interested in all of them that's great you just need to focus your energies first in one once you are confident and you have a really good portfolio and you get really good jobs from that you can then also st try to access the other areas and you will see it will help the original uh, area um, what are the best resources and ways to learn and improve your skills it's definitely um, internet 
I would say, first of all, internet. Not books, internet, even though I like reading books. For, for learning about creative uh, uh, and Photoshop in general, internet is the best. There are so many blogs, um, online art communities that you can access and see whenever you want. Lots of lots of free tutorials, just like on my blog. If you want to check it out, yes, I'm a designer.com. That's my blog. Um, and there you can find more information about these courses as well, the upcoming courses. The first one will be digital art in May, end of May. And then there will be second one, photo uh, retouch and graphic design. Um, uh, so the, the, the blogs and uh, communities, um, these uh, online art communities are definitely can help you a lot. And books, of course, can help, but they are better for learning the theory, not practical things. For practical things, it's better to use the internet. Courses are really good mainly because you get uh, straight away some feedback. So that's priceless sometimes, because you can spend hours or days on blogs, but sometimes spending a couple of minutes with a teacher can help you more than what you spend days on before. So it's... I heard about academy class, but I'm not sure if you know about it. <laughs> yeah, I heard them. They're good. They're quite good. Yeah. <laughs> Who should? Um, maybe. What you mean is uh, Gary? Uh, I heard Gary. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, and another really interesting thing is that. Uh, sharing your knowledge is a great way to improve your, your skills because what I always say is um, teaching is the best way to learn and that's really true. When I started teaching, I was still at the university. Uh, I was, I think, 19 years old and I started teaching Photoshop, mainly first for, for my friends and at the school because we had to use Photoshop, but there was no courses for Photoshop at the university. So we were all self-taught. And uh, I was always into Photoshop from a young age, so I could help my friends. And then I realized that it's actually quite fun. And through teaching them, I always learn new things because they ask something which I never thought of before. And just on the spot, I can come up with the solution. But on my own, I would never thought about that problem because I never had that problem, but they will have the problem and that will help me improve. So that was one of the ma main things I started teaching because I realized that actually I'm helping others, but this helps me a lot as well to improve my skills. So through teaching, I've learned the most, not through learning. It's interesting because you're learning from yourself and from people who want to learn from you, but it's really true that teaching is the best way to learn. It's, believe me, it's a really important thing I've learned throughout the years. What are, uh, yeah, what are the best ways to start working in the creative field? Definitely you need to find something that will motivate and inspire you, first of all. That's, that's a really important thing. Uh, to be able to get your work out there, it's great if you can find uh, something which has a fan base. If you, have, if you find it like a computer game, it's mainly for like digital. Like if you find a computer game or a film that you like, and you create some fan uh, art for, for that, and then you share it on uh, communities like DeviantArt, for example, and you will get lots of lots of feedback immediately. And that will, again, help you to improve your skills, but also to find jobs, because you will, you will have your work out there, and people will start to talk about you. And some, someone might just simply go straight to you and ask you, would you like to work for us? And that that's really easy, can easily happen. If you spend time, it's, it applies to graphic design as well. I'm sure you've seen lots of uh, websites where they share inspirational stuff. One of my friends who studied in the same university with me, he uh, decided to create, um, to work on logos, just logo design, purely logo design. And he just uh, came up with... He didn't really work for any clients or just very like friends mainly, first of all. But most of his logo design were fictional. He just came up with names and like a fictional company behind it and designed those logos. And he spent every day five to six hours to always create one logo a day. And he, he did this for a whole year. So he ended up having like 300 or even more 
really cool logos. They all looked really cool. And then he had, had an impressive uh, portfolio. And because it was not for real clients, he could share it anywhere because it was his own creation. And it doesn't have to be a real logo. People will understand that, OK, this, is, this looks, looks really cool. And I can actually see the company behind it, even there's no company behind it. And he got a job. Once he shared this work, he, he kept it for himself. He was still at university with me. So he didn't really look for a job at that time. But once he shared it, two days after that, he was asked for a job from California from a big logo design agency. And obviously, he went there and he left university. But that's, uh, that the, later on, he finished university as well. But this is just a good, a good example of uh, uh, finding inspiration, sharing your stuff, and be be very uh, patient with yourself. Because obviously, first time, it won't be nice. It won't be as good as the things that you see on the internet. Probably even the hundredth times, it won't be as good as your, your favorite images on the internet. But if you are patient with yourself, and you're consistent with your work that you spend time and time again, it will get there soon, sooner or later. Another useful, useful advice. Create a portfolio as soon as possible. Uh, I highly recommend Behance.net. Behance.net is the best portfolio website. So easy to create your portfolio, and it will look really cool. You don't have to know anything about web design. That's the best place to go. And you can also find lots of inspirational stuff there. Uh, most designers will have a portfolio on Behance. You will see that you can find almost everyone there. For di digital art, it's more deviant art, deviantart.com. But for graphic design, uh, it's more um, Behance. Another, another very useful thing is start, as an, start working as an intern. It will definitely help you to get there. If you are not confident in yourself as a designer, you can always look for intern jobs where you might get paid or you might not. But even though you not get paid for the, let's say, first couple of months, you will get so much from the company that you, 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 it's just priceless, the things you will learn with the company. Obviously, you have to, you have to uh, find a company where you can learn a lot. But working as an intern will always help you. And uh, it's quite easy to find jobs and, as interns. And my personal best um, advice for how to start working in the creative industry is something I call guerrilla freelancing. Uh, the reason why I call it like this is, and I usually say like it's get behind the enemy lines, is what I do, uh, what I used to do when I started working in design uh, as a freelance designer is I didn't have any interviews arranged with companies that I wanted to work for. And these companies were not only design companies, they were also like uh, just uh, corporate offices. But I knew that they need uh, design as well for their uh, posters and uh, newsletters and stuff like that. So what I did is I went there without anything with me, had no portfolio or nothing. I just went there and I told uh, at the uh, reception that I want to talk with someone about the design-related jobs here in this company. And I always had someone coming down to talk with me. And I just told them that I'm a designer and I would like to work for you. What I offer is please give me something which is urgent for your company. Someone probably is working on it already, maybe a whole department. Just give it to me on the side. You won't lose anything with that. Just give it to me and tell me what to do with it, and I will be back tomorrow with the finished work. And uh, most of the times they were like, OK, OK, just it's, it's, it's not, it's, uh, yeah. <laughs> they won't believe me, and they will, be, they will probably send me away, and then no, it's not, it's not, it won't happen. But like two times out of ten, it happened, and they, they actually they were like, OK, why not? And they gave me on a stick the files that they needed to be done, and they tell me, told me what to do. It took them only five minutes. Of the, I took only five minutes of their time. Went home, spent the whole night working on the stuff. Went back out the other day, tried to look OK <laughs> without sleeping. I gave them the work, and it was exactly how they wanted. And they probably charged like two weeks of work for that, because they were a design company, always 
like charged for like two weeks, even though they only work on it a couple of days, because that's that's how they set it up. And it's not like lying to the client. They need they need to set the time for two weeks for their work. And I made it there for whole, my whole one night. I worked on it, and it was done. And obviously, from that point on, it was out of question that they will give me work. So I will be there. Uh, they outsource the work for me, or they can even offer me to work there. So this is, mo this is obviously something for this kind of approach. You need to be confident with yourself. But even if you are not confident, you can still give it a try. They might just say, no, this is not the level that we need. Again, it's not a problem. You, you just gave it a try, and you've learned a lot on the way. So definitely worth trying this. It worked for me really well. And uh, uh, when I used to teach design in Hungary, I told this to all of my delegates. And there were many of them trying this out, and most of them were successful doing this. So this is an approach, my personal approach, which, which I think is really fun, and uh, it works. It's successful. So uh, what are the useful attributes to have in the, uh, yeah, that's the next one, the next slide. What are the useful attributes to have in the creative field? Just quickly go through these. Time management, concentration but also playfulness. Humor, being a team player, but on the other hand, being able to solve problems on your own as well. Curiosity is a useful thing. Confidence, but being humble. So not overconfident, that's definitely not good. Uh, following the briefs and understand the client's needs. That's basic, very, very useful thing to have. No keyboard shortcuts with the applications. In Photoshop, there's so many keyboard shortcuts. My left hand is always on the keyboard, and I, I use it as a piano. I'm always typing whenever I use Photoshop, so it really saves a lot of time using keyboard shortcuts. Uh, I've, seen, uh, I've seen statistics that the same um, designer working with a keyboard shortcut can be like four or five times more effective than without the keyboard <coughs> shortcuts. So it it's really makes a big difference. And uh, I've, been to, I've been to interviews where the first question was, do you work with keyboard shortcuts? If, I, if you say no, goodbye. That's it. Th that's how important it is. So it's really essential uh, to, to know the keyboard shortcuts. Obviously, you don't need to know all of them. But the more you know, the better. Working non-destructively, in most fields, it's essential. Being, organi being organized, it, it applies to you the desk and the desktop, so your environment and the uh, desktop on the computer and video file management. Being organized is really important because I have files, uh, I have external drives attached to my computer because I have so many freelance work apart from the stuff that do, I do for uh, um, Ryzen. You've seen those examples. but So I have so many at least like eight terabytes of graphic design on these external drives. And if anyone asks me from my previous clients, let's say six, seven years ago, from, from a, for a work six, seven years ago, that they want to make an ad adjustment to it and use it again, it probably will take me 10 seconds to find it because I have everything organized using keywords and everything. So if I need to look for something, it's like click, 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 and I'm there, even though I have as you can see, like eight terabytes of files. You can imagine how many files I have on my computer. So being organized is really important. Um, eager, eager to learn and improve your skills. Very, very useful to have as a, an attribute. And good in multitasking is also useful. Now, what are the attributes not to have in the creative field? So what is a disadvantage if you are one of these? Arrogance is something won't help you. So being overconfident is one of the worst things in the creative field. Um, forgetfulness, definitely not good because, for example, that uh, retouch work when there were so many little uh, marks, if you forget one, you won't get paid, even though you spent the whole day on it. They will find that, definitely find that little mistake and you won't get paid. So it's being forgetful is not good. Laziness won't help you, for sure. It's fun being in the creative industry, but you have to still be very up to the challenge all the time. And it's being lazy won't help you. Carelessness, definitely not a good thing. Be being easily distracted. 
again, not good. So you have to be able to keep focus on the, the work that you do. Being shy won't help you again, uh, mainly because you, be, you have to be able to talk and uh, communicate your ideas. It's not only visual communication, you have to talk with your clients as well. Even though you are an intern, you still need to talk with your team, uh, you need to understand the client's needs, so it's always communication. If you are shy, I've, I, I've, I've met uh, several very shy people, and uh, they can be amazing with their art, but they can't really get there because they're just too shy to share their work. They're always afraid of showing their work, and that's not good. You can be, your work can be really crap, yet you can still, if you show it, you will learn a lot from the feedback. Um, so, yeah, it's better to create something crap than being shy. Basically, that's what I'm saying. Uh, <laughs> if you can't handle criticism, that's, that's, again, something which won't help you. So uh, it's really important to be able to understand that most of the time, critique will help you to become better. Even, you, even though most of the times when you design something, you always feel this is the best, uh, best I've ever created. And then you show it to someone and they will say, why is that there? It's, it's just, the composition is just not right. And you feel like, oh my God, this is, this is my favorite work. Why do you say that? Obviously, that's your favorite and best work so far, but you will never be at the best. You will always just getting there. So you are always on the way. Even, even I'm, I feel like I'm in the beginning of my, my uh, approach to become a good designer. So it's, um, again, being humble is, is a good thing. And, and uh, when someone critiques your work, you have to take in everything, not take it as an insult, definitely not as an insult, as, as a positive feedback. Even if it sounds negative, it, it's always positive. If someone who completely is useless for design and tells you something about your design, you still should listen because that that uh, critique can help you sometimes even more than a professional uh, critique. Okay, so when you design at home and you want to work as a freelance designer, you can always ask your mom or your friends, and things that they will tell you will be also useful. Um, being envious of other designers' work and success won't help you again. So you have to you have to uh, look up to. The, to other designers and um, yeah so that's that's also an important thing and um, shall I work next question and we have only two questions left and then it's up to you to ask more questions shall I work as a freelance designer that's a really interesting question because you can uh, even though you are completely at the beginning of your creative career you can start work as a freelance designer but you have to have a very good self-discipline to be able to do that. If you prefer working on your own, it will be definitely better to, for you than working in a design studio, because in a design studio, most of the time, it's crazy. It's everyone running around, uh, lots of projects going around. Uh, it's not as, as peaceful as working from home, listening to the music that you like, having coffee, and doing what you want in the, in the uh, tempo and pace that you like. So being freelance design can be really nice, but you have to, you have to be able to work on your own, have to have that self-discipline, and um, you, you still need to be good, definitely, with communicating with your client, because basically you will be the marketing team. In one, one person, you will be the marketing team, the accounts, also, so you have to be good with that as well, and the creative part. So you have to do all this together like a whole little company in one person if you want to do freelance. If you can manage that, great, then you can be a freelance designer and you can find your clients on your own and decide which companies you would like to work for. The, I think the, the most companies that I worked for in, at the same time was around like 15. So 15 companies gave me work at the same time I was working for them. It was crazy. It's, it's, it's not good. So it's, uh, it's always better to, to filter out and to choose the ones that you really want to work for, what you enjoy, and the companies that you can easily, uh, the friendly companies you can easily work together. Okay, 
So, and there's a brief, sometimes even from a brief, you can tell that it's just too painstaking, the whole process with this company. I'd rather find another one. Okay, so uh, obviously it depends, when, because when you start as a freelance designer, as a designer, you might need to take on everything just to learn, but uh, sooner or later you will be able to choose the ones that you prefer to work for. What can I charge? Again, it depends on the client, your experience and your portfolio, uh, the complexity of the project, and the number of stages based on the additional changes asked by the client. So there's so many factors that can increase the, the price of your work, and it's only, only up to you to value your work. And that's the most interesting thing or most important thing to say about this, because what I, tell you, what I suggest to you is to try to give a reasonable price for the work that you are doing, but still, uh, still make it enough to keep you happy working on the project. Because if you're not happy, if you start working like, oh, they will only pay like 10 pounds for this. I, I just don't want to do it. It just doesn't worth doing it. Then you won't, you won't do a good job. And then the whole thing, it just doesn't worth spending time on it. So always give a price which is reasonable, but will keep you happy working on the project. Okay, so uh, it's, it's hard to tell an exact value because it it's, it's depends on the work itself. And I think that's all. These are all the questions. Let me see. There's no more slides. So thanks a lot for your attention. I hope you enjoyed it. And now it's your part. Just ask any questions. Just again about the courses. We will have all these three main areas covered each in one weekend. So if you want to learn, I will be the, the instructor and we will go through real life examples. So from licensing design to logo design, things that clients ask me to do and we will go through those together and you can learn a lot from them. So if you're interested, you can find all these on academic, uh, is it on academy class website as well? most of them, or on my blog, yesimadesigner.com. You can find them under the courses. The worst presentation you ever <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.